Hey everyone, Formula One cars are known for their incredible stopping power. So in this video I'm going to be explaining Formula One brakes. Now Formula One brakes are similar to that on road cars in the fact that they use disc brakes. However, there are several key changes that they make. One of that being the material. Car uh, so F1 brakes use a carbon composite and there's three main benefits of this. There isn't much brake fade, so as the temperature gets higher of the brakes, uh, they don't they don't stop, they don't have less stopping power, the frictional difference is very minimal. Also they have minimal wear regardless of temperature and they weigh quite a bit less than standard steel rotors, um, about half as much. So of course why doesn't everyone have this on their car? Cost, obviously. So they're very expensive. But that doesn't matter because it's Formula One. So. What other changes do they make? Well, of course they're going to get extremely hot because you're constantly stopping in Formula One. So one of the things that they've added in is this brake air intake. So if you're looking at the front tire of the car, uh, which the two front tires will obviously have the most braking to do, um, you're going to have this air intake so that while you're driving, air is going to be pushed in inside of the wheel and it's going to spool around that uh, that brake rotor and cool it off. So as it spools around there it's cooling it so the different components we've got in there we've got the brake rotor and we've got the caliper. If you don't understand how disc brakes work I do have a video on that that you can check out. Um, I'll just include an annotation somewhere in here. Uh, also you've got this wheel fairing on the outside and that also plays a pretty important role. So you've got that air that's going to be spooling around around the brake disc but that air has to go somewhere. So you've got this wheel fairing that directs the flow of the air. Now previously they had these air intakes without the wheel fairings and what would happen is you'd have the air dissipating all over the tire and you'd create this turbulent pocket of air and mess with the aerodynamic performance of the vehicle. So with these wheel fairings you just have a small opening which the air is allowed to escape, escape and it's pushed out and away from the vehicle minimizing its impact on the aerodynamics. So, some other things about Formula One brakes. Well, there is no ABS. ABS, of course, gives you the best possible stopping power. Uh, you can probably stop faster than any human is capable of using ABS if it has the right number of cycles. If you want to understand more about that, I do have a video. I'll include another annotation. Um, so, what they're going for there is they want driver skill. They don't want a computer to do it for you. So then, temperatures above 700 degrees Celsius, and these brakes can't handle that. I've heard of numbers up to 1000 degrees Celsius, and these brakes can still stop at those temperatures, which is pretty remarkable. You could not do that with steel rotors. You'd have all kinds of fade, and you would just drift into whatever you're steering towards. Uh, so, a very interesting thing about uh, Formula One and their braking, how incredible it is, due to the tires and the downforce, is how quickly they can stop. So from 100 kilometers per hour, they can stop in less than 15 meters. So if we're to change that to uh, American units, if you will, uh, so you've got about 62 miles per hour to zero in about 48 feet. Pretty remarkable. Also, they, it's claimed that they can stop from 200 miles per hour to zero in about four seconds and you'll experience four to five G's. That's, these are pretty remarkable numbers so I'm going to show a little clip um, just to show how short of a distance that really is uh, at the end and I'm also going to include uh, an image of a Formula One car with these uh, wheel fairings and the uh, air intake for the brakes. So in this picture you can see the air intake for the brake right beside the tire so as the car is moving at high speeds, the air will be forced in and can circulate around the disc brakes and cool them off. Now to give you an idea of just how quickly a Formula One car can stop, that telephone pole is about 50 feet away from me. So where I'm standing, a Formula One car could stop from 62 miles per hour or 100 kilometers per hour before that telephone pole right there. The best thing you can do is just get out a tape measure and measure out 50 feet and really understand how short of a distance that is. It's pretty incredible that a vehicle can stop in, in that distance.